The backlash to Claudine Gay's forced resignation is actually magnificent. Is it not? Like, it's, <laughs> it's everyone knew their role to play and they're playing it to perfection. It genuinely amuses me. Um, for example, there's Ibram X. Kendi. Okay. Uh, first of all, he goes on with the question to assess whether this was a racist attack against her isn't whether Dr. Gay engaged in any misconduct. The question is whether all these people would have investigated, surveilled, harassed, written about, and attacked her in the same way if the Harvard president in this case would have been white. I, period, think, period, not, period. It could never happen, too often obviously. Yeah. <laughs> too, too often That's mainstream reporters <laughs> join the racist mob or give it credibility as they did here, just as they did a century ago. That's, mm. and he went on. I mean, he's got uh, several tweets along these lines. Um, Celesting, you know, she wrote Little Files Everywhere. Hers was one of my favorites. What we've learned here is bad faith bigots pretending they're concerned about anti-Semitism will happily use women of color, especially black women, as a scapegoat and lightning rod for large systemic issues. And that people invested in maintaining those systemic issues will comply. And then I'll just give you one more. Nicole <laughs> Hannah-Jones, of course, the 1619 Project writer. Academic freedom is under attack. Racial justice programs are under attack. Black women will be made to pay. Our so-called allies too often lack any real courage. So guys, it is the fault of systemic racism and its allies in the media who too often go along with the narrative not to mention bad actors like Chris Rufo, who's getting blamed for all the reporting he did on this. Um, you know, right-wing conservatives who seized an opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. What do you make of it? Who wants to go? Well, Moynihan, you, you're, you're our resident plagiarism. <laughs> you're a resident plagiarism expert, and this is a plagiarism yes. scandal. So you're the guy. Neil. I need no, you to win. I, you, you, I, I you unearthed I, I, plagiarism. I have many, many plagiarism scandals, and I want to correct Camille on this. Um, <laughs> I am now also an anti-racism expert. Yes. Um, because I have discovered how that one defeats these racists. It's um, to not plagiarize 60 times. <laughs> and then none of this ever <laughs> happens. You, you can't That's bull great. Connor your way into a plagiarism <laughs> um, allegation. No, it's funny, before we started, uh, Camille uh, very helpfully reminded me that she makes $900,000 a year. I yes. mean, I mean, look, the incredible <laughs> thing about this is that there was a clip this morning actually sent your producer, uh, the great Steve Krakow, I, uh, from um, another game, uh, what's her name, Mara Gay from the New York Times, who another, went on in an incoherent gay. ramble, another gay, sorry. <laughs> that was, I'm very pro-gay generally, but in this case, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but she went on this incoherent ramble and none of it addressed the actual allegations. It's all the people are terrible. All the people are doing terrible things. They hate black people. They hate black women in particular. Multiculturalism yeah. is also the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, I mean, the, the very basic thing here is not only did she plagiarize, and by the way, this is very, very clear plagiarism. I'm somebody who's written a lot about this. I actually am very tough on some of these plagiarism allegations and say, well, I don't think that meets the standards. This met the standards 10 times over and it kept on going so bad in fact, that she plagiarized in her acknowledgments, which I thought was really remarkable. That's really showing a, a certain level of laziness. But also, it just the, the it shows the kind of rot in these institutions. This is the most prestigious university on earth. Can we can we say that it's what maybe Oxford, maybe maybe Cambridge? No, I'd, I'd say Harvard's number one. That is the stand-in when you're talking about academic excellence. And you have the president of this place, who's not only a plagiarist, but has produced almost nothing in her academic career. And this is also not somebody. And this, by the way, I'm going to make a, a slight recommendation before I kick this over to uh, to Camille to to you know give the not black perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he doesn't identify as black for your listeners who don't know that's that. right um <laughs> but the incredible thing about this is claudine gay uh went to phillips exeter um one of the most elite schools on on the yes. east coast um she then went to princeton decided she didn't like princeton very much and then went to stanford and then went on to harvard 
I would suggest maybe getting somebody from a more of a working class background who actually does have a record and has worked very hard in their life and not produced 16 or 15 or 12 or however many sort of lazy and, and halfway fraudulent academic articles and never produced a book. But, um, you know, I saw Mark Lamont Hill, the the um, writer, professor. Hip-hop who just intellectual to, is uh, hip-hop how he intellectual. himself in his bio that's how for many did. years. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so which makes a certain amount of sense. Yes. Um, <laughs> but he said, you know, we must replace her with another black woman. I mean, this is kind of the problem. Period. It? Is that, it, you know, it, that's it. It, was, it wasn't who. It could be anybody. Yeah. I mean, obviously it wasn't Candace Owens. <laughs> She's not, he's not <laughs> right. making that. Well, he didn't say that's that. that right. How about, how about Candace? Maybe, Why not? Maybe, maybe, like, like, yeah. She's smart. She's young. Yeah, She'd have she a long a, a runway ahead of her. Yeah, the shape and, and prob- shade. Probably of a more significant publishing record, too. Yeah, but, shape uh, and yeah. shade of her genitalia. Check out. So it should be yeah. fine. <laughs> now, that's all you need. <laughs> shape and really shade. That's all you need for, for when you're selecting the vice president of the United States as well. You just declare initially it's going to be a black woman for sure. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, or Supreme Court justice. Feels good. You really yeah, set these good. women up for success when you do that, too. Everybody, when they come, thinks first about yeah. their mind and not at all about those other things. How could anyone doubt their credentials once you've once you've laid that groundwork for them? You know, I, I may disappoint Moynihan here. I mean, the perspective oh, no. I'd really like to bring to bear is actually the perspective I can offer as a board member of the wonderful organization FIRE, the Foundation for Inter- um for uh, You got it. Yeah. You can do it. You got it. You can do it, man. <laughs> we, we know re- what it is. We rebranded Free speech. it. So initially it was education and now it's yeah. uh, expression. Expression. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, we've been defending free speech and have been defending, and I'm using the we very generously there because I'm on the board. I don't do any of the heavy lifting, um, but just defending academic freedom on campus for years and years. And it is amazing to see people on MSNBC now very animated about the attack on academic freedom in the specific context of an overpaid administrator who has a documented history of engaging in plagiarism. Now this is an attack on free expression. I want to commend to them the FIRE's rankings, which have for years now documented the rot in higher education and the genuine attack on free expression. Nicole Hannah-Jones ought to be well aware of this. FIRE came to her defense when she found herself in the midst of a firestorm where people were insisting that she shouldn't get a job because of her particular political background, and in some cases criticizing some of her work on the 1619 Project. But in either case, FIRE came to her defense because they're nonpartisan and they believe in genuine diversity in higher education um, and they believe in free expression in higher education. This isn't an example of that by any stretch of the imagination. And it doesn't matter who is particularly excited about the fact that Miss Gay is being purged from the university or resigning because of the controversy surrounding her. The controversy would not exist but for the documented history of plagiarism, which has existed for some times, records and rumors about this have existed for some time. Harvard has investigated it. Correct. And the only conclusion you can reach at the end of this is to let her go if you actually want to be taken seriously when you're censoring students, expelling students regularly for engaging in the same kind of conduct that that Miss Gay is now being um, slammed for. It's not a, a white supremacist cabal There's no secret conspiracy here. I would even say that, you know, the activists who are most thumping their chest, hoping to be given credit for this, they don't matter here. What matters is that she's a plagiarist. And as a result, she's getting bounced. The question, of course, is who replaces her? Who replaces her? That's the thing. (laughs) Oh, this poor guy. We know who's replacing her temporarily. This poor, poor man. Can you imagine being this man? Hold on. Where is he? What's his name? Um, I've got it here someplace in front of me. But- Alan Garber and the poor guy is white. <laughs> Can you imagine what's going to happen? <laughs> That's why he's temporary. His, his oh, genitals Alan. don't 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 actually measure up for the position here. Don't, it's the wrong shape. Don't the get wrong too shade. comfortable, Alan. It's yeah. definitely not happening. You're on the and way out. And Alan sir. also condemned the university's first shot at um, you know commenting on the anti-Semitism on campus. He was like, "Oh, he didn't get there." Alan is not long for this job, even the temporary job. So he should not be too comfortable in that seat. Um, the, here's the AP, you guys probably saw this today, their, their take on this, the Associated Press. Harvard president's resignation highlights new conservative weapon against colleges, plagiarism. What? <laughs> this, <laughs> what? Fantastic. We may be missing <laughs> the real yeah, story, that's not how that works. AP. Conservative's pants. I yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm thinking Matt Welsh, like over at Reason, this is not, this would not have been your headline. Scroll down in that the piece too. They they uh they also say that uh, um Chris Rufo using the word scalp is a uh, a classic uh, white supremacist uh, play. White colonialism. Like 
couldn't make less sense if you put it in a blender and poured it out of a fourth story walk up window. Right. Um, Even I actually I, went back just for kicks, Matt, just to just to see, you know, Wikipedia. Um, how does Wikipedia describe describe scalping? Right. And of course, the whole thing is about the Native Americans. The whole thing is about the Native Americans, what they did. It's not about the white colonialists who came over. Um, but the AP apparently didn't even simply consult Wikipedia. They just decided to blame that too on the evil white man. I want to uh, to highlight a word that you used at the intro, Megan, which is performs. Um, you were talking about various people were like performing their roles. There is something so performative about a lot of the response to this. It it feels rote. Mm -hmm. It feels trite. It feels not necessarily even that much believed by the people doing it. But part of what they are doing. Um, is trying to browbeat the media, right? There's a like, oh, look, your allies in the media aren't performing well. You you fell for the Chris Rufo tricksterism. I can't believe you let them frame the issue here. Though all of those great words are tells that they're trying to tell their kind of fellow traveler colleagues in elite mm -hmm. institutions to act and behave in a certain way, and that is why you get conservatives pounce headlines. The Megyn Kelly Show is supported by Grand Canyon University. Founded in 1949, GCU is a private Christian university that is dedicated to delivering an affordable and transformative higher education. Their vibrant campus is located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. And according to Niche.com, it's ranked a top 25 best campus in the country. As of June 2023, GCU offers 330 academic programs with over 270 of them online allowing you the freedom to earn your degree on your time from wherever you are. At GCU, your degree, whether it's a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate, integrates the free market system and a welcoming Christian worldview. Learn more about GCU's programs, competitive tuition rates, and scholarship offers from your university counselor. They're part of the supportive graduation team that will take a personalized approach to helping you achieve your academic goals, walking alongside you every step of the way. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. For more info or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.